And here's a quick overview of uh, what you're gonna need. First, uh, get your secondary clutch off. Right here, that's your stock secondary clutch. Your new Helix from Bike Man. Torsion spring. Uh, you're gonna need a T25. This special tool from Bike Man, you'll see it on their website, along with the clutching stuff. Pry bar. Uh, T40, preferably a quality one. Uh, you need a drill. Uh, quarter inch drill bit and I have this rolled up old belt that broke and I have it zip tied it fits inside of here when the clutch is upside down to space it you'll see why later and also you need a clutch compression tool I have this little pocket in here to aid in getting out the Torx bolts I'll show you here in a little bit so take it here I got this little cup right this cup ends up fitting right under there. Put this guy in. In this instance, I actually put the cup in upside down. Put this in through there. So that we end up pushing down on the center post here. We don't want to push on the outside, we want to push on the center post. It'll open up the clutch. And then, what I highly recommend you do before you try removing these Torx bolts. Right under here, there's uh, aluminum that the clutch towers come through. You want to heat that up like that from the side away from the plastic. Hold it long enough so that you break the Loctite free. Once you do that on all of them, they'll come out. I already did these other ones so we don't have to sit through. bolts out. Set them to the side, don't lose them, you gotta reuse them. And then, take the clutch apart. This is under spring load, so make sure that when you get to the top of the threads, there's not still load on it. If there is, don't put your face over the top of it. It'll make a hit. <laughs> Very minimal pressure right now. So it shouldn't be tight right here right now. If it is, be careful. Now, the clutch is now apart. See this piece right here? That gets thrown away. There's another plastic space right here. Throw that away or save it for fun. I don't care what you do with it, but you don't reuse it. Now, this piece right here, you're gonna to wanna to go. See this right here, where the roller is? Where this is, you go halfway between it. Right in the channel, right, right beneath this mark. That's where we're gonna drill it. You don't have to drill the whole way through. You just have to drill far enough for the spring tab to stick in it. You can see on this side, it lines up with this bridge. Don't drill the whole way through that bridge. Just drill in far enough. You can kind of see where it came through and it sh your hole should have lined right up with that. Now, I'm gonna put this back in. I grab the new helix. Don't worry about your spring yet. 
I'm gonna put that in later. Take out all these little Torx bolts. I want to add the fun for the video. All right, now these slots here line up with your plastic little ramps. If you have a turbo model or a 1100 or 7000 that doesn't have engine reverse, you can take these out of there. In fact, you should. They're only used for engine reverse. upside down get these lined up with the holes. All right, take some blue Loctite, put just a little bit on the threads. Don't hit them in with the impact. You can use it to kind of snug them up, but you don't want to tighten them with the impact. We'll torque those. Torque all these to twenty foot pounds. There. And then you go from this one to this one that one to that one in a crisscross pattern all right now take the clutch now we're working from this side clean off this surface remove this little cup or whatever you use to space that set it in the holder you want to slide this that way until the roller is tight against the ramp make a line on these two sheaves right here that's your zero position there's no wind Take your spring, find your little hole you made, stick it in there, take the cap, find out where the hole is in the bottom of it, put that in this. Now with everything in the zero position, here let me grab my belt to space underneath this, this is what I use this belt for, holds the sheave up. Now, take this cap, put the spring in the position there. Find out where your line is. Put another line here, and another line about down there. That's your zero position. There's no wind right now. Now you'll take your tool right here, from bike band. Compress it a little bit that on there. Now we're just going to tighten her up. You can see now, with very little effort, we hit a hole position right here and we're lined up. Look down from the top here. See that hole right there? It makes this hole right here number one. So now we'll take these little screws, put a little blue Loctite on them if I have it open, 
And we'll start them. Don't tighten them the whole way up yet. Now here comes the wine part. So now, if your kid says you wanna be in hole four, you count one, two, three, four. This is hole four. If your kid says hole five, this is hole five. Those are the two most commonly used positions in our kit and you shouldn't deviate from those too much. Now, I'll show you how to wind it. Take your torque or your uh, pry bar. Take a cap, just spin it like this. So you hit hole four, that's where we want to be. And you just go, tighten it up. Once two are in, you take the pry bar out. You're gonna to wanna to torque these to the spec that's listed in your instruction sheet. Now you can check your clutch when you're done with it to make sure you did everything right. This little cap in it. If you push down, on, on the movable sheave. I don't know if I can do it on the bench here, but I can do it on the ground here. So if you push down on it, your ramp will always follow the roller. If for some reason your clutch is over here when you're doing that, you didn't do it right. So you want pressure on that. And everything's done.